Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. China is doubling down on its zero COVID strategy, saying the spread of the potentially mild Omicron variant is no reason to lower its guard, even if it means to disrupt economic activities and even stoke public unrest as lockdowns drag into a third year. Beijing has stepped up policies to stamp out any new outbreak as soon as it arises, sealing off cities, shutting transport links, and launching mass testing programs. As part of the country's strategy for keeping the virus at bay, residents in Chinese cities must display their infection status on a government-monitored app to enter supermarkets, offices, or even the capital. Chinese President Xi Jinping has cited China's approach as a major strategic success and evidence of the significant advantages of its political system over Western liberal democracies. There is some truth in it. China was the only major economy to grow in 2020, and it accounted for a fraction of global deaths and infections. But some experts warn that China could become the victim of its own success as a lack of exposure to COVID-19 over the past two years leaves it vulnerable to the more infectious Omicron, which already broke out in the southern province of Guangdong as well as Beijing. And the President Xi Jinping's personal attachment to the policy makes it impossible to change course. In countries like Britain and the US, which have had a comparatively light restrictions against Omicron wave, there is a glimmer of hope that the process might be underway. Cases skyrocketed in recent weeks but have since dropped in Britain and may have leveled off in the US, perhaps because the extremely contagious variant is running out of people to infect. Some places already are talking about easing COVID-19 precautions. China, which will be in the international spotlight when the Beijing Winter Olympics begin in February, is not seeing the same dynamic. Yang Zhonghuang is a global health specialist at the Council on Foreign Relations. He believes that China has backed itself into a corner. With a large population that does not have immunity against COVID-19, it should be easy for this new variant to quickly multiply and spread in China. China has cancelled scores of inbound international flights in recent weeks due to passenger infections. Authorities have also asked people to not visit their hometowns around the Lunar New Year at the start of February a move that will dampen spending during China's most important family holiday. And the major city of Xi'an in the west and the ports, uh, parts of Ningbo, a busy port south of Shanghai, are under lockdown. In Shanghai, a major transit point that has seen a spike in imported infections in recent weeks, authorities recently sealed off office blocks, department stores, and a tea shop where two people who tested positive for COVID had worked. Several schools in the city have closed early for the holiday. In early January, Eurasia Group published a report which said China has become a victim of its own success and is now struggling to find a way out, and predicted greater economic disruptions and the rising public dissatisfaction. It said, China's policy will fail to contain infections, leading to larger outbreaks requiring in turn more severe lockdowns. That provoked an angry response from the official China Daily, which described it as a ridiculous conjecture full of political bias. Beijing's practice throughout the pandemic of trying to find and isolate every infected person has largely protected hospitals from becoming overwhelmed and staved off the deaths that have engulfed most of the world. But this approach also means most people in China have never been exposed to the virus. At the same time, the effectiveness of China's most widely used vaccines has been called into question. New studies suggest that 
they offer significantly less protection against infection from Omicron even after three doses. The effect of the people get after booster shots of the leading Western vaccines is far better. Together, these factors could complicate China's effort to get past the pandemic. Experts say if China were to relax restrictions, it could face a surge similar to what Singapore or Australia experienced, despite a highly vaccinated population. It is risky for China to reopen right now because Omicron is spreading globally. Da Li Yang is a professor who studies Chinese policies at the University of Chicago. He said, it's a big challenge for leaders, especially their rhetoric on saving lives. How do you justify opening up and then having tens of thousands of people dying in the process? This fall, the Communist Party will hold a major decision-making meeting, 20th Party Congress. If the COVID numbers start to skyrocket to big levels, it will reflect badly on Xi Jinping's leadership. Frustration is rising among Chinese citizens who can do little but wait. With worsening outbreaks, the consequences of exposure have grown harsher. Last week, three people were sentenced to four-plus years in prison for violations that led to a COVID outbreak. In Hong Kong, which is enduring its own COVID zero restrictions, a recent case was traced to a pet store when a hamster tested positive for COVID. The government sent more than 100 shop customers into quarantine and ordered the culling of thousands of hamsters, rabbits, chinchillas, and other rodents in the city. Polling obviously isn't an issue for the Communist Party, but protests might be. Perhaps not tomorrow or even next year, but maybe sooner than we might expect. Some say it may be the greatest test CCP has faced since hundreds or maybe thousands of protesters were killed by government forces in Beijing's Tiananmen Square in 1989. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly.